Hello, everyone. I'm Emiliano. I'm with VirusTotal. I'm a software engineer there. <laughs> I've been with VirusTotal for almost seven years right now. Uh, over these years, it's been really exciting. Many things happening, uh, increasingly difficult uh, scalability problems, MySQL cor corruptions, uh, migrations to Google App Engine infrastructure, and leading to the acquisition of VirusTotal uh, by Google in 2012. So we are actually a team located in Malaga, southern Spain, and we have nothing to do with the Trojan case uh, mentioned by the previous speaker that was located in Spain. <laughs> so the thing is, VirusTotal is a pretty hermetic team, mainly because we've been the same people for something like six years now, and we don't speak much in public conferences. We are Spanish and we are not very at ease with, with English. Spanish are good at winning World Cups and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> so hopefully this talk we shed, will shed some light into the stuff that we are doing and probably stuff that you haven't noticed in our site. So what is VirusTotal for the average end user? Most of you will say that VirusTotal is a multi-antivirus service and that's correct. It's somewhere where you arrive and you can upload a file and after submitting it, you will get results by over 50 antivirus solutions. So you will get something like, hey, this has been detected by 40 antiviruses and these are the labels they give it, like worm bobic or whatever it's called there. But the thing is, there, are, there is a lot of misconception as to what VirusTotal can do. The first one is, what kind of files can we scan? And most people, many of the average end users, think that if not, I can speak up. Okay. So most people will think that we can only scan Windows executables, and that's a common misconception. We can actually scan any kind of binary content. This is an example of a PHP cell that you commonly used in PHP injection attacks. As you can see, the actual signatures provided by the antiviruses are not generic detections, but rather they, they know it's PHP and they can detect that. Similarly, we also detect Linux CLF files. That's a, a common Linux backdoor. As you can see, the signatures are not generic. They are specifically for the threat itself also. And this is another example of a Mac OS executable. So that's one of the common misconceptions regarding VirusTotal. So, Let's take it a bit further with this hypothetical average end user. If he's curious enough, he will have noticed that in addition to scanning files, we are also able to scan URLs. So if you provide a URL to VirusTotal, it will be scanned with a different set of uh, solutions, which are not the antiviruses themselves, but the other companies and services providing blacklists of malicious URLs. And in the event that the content pointed to by the URL is uh, a file, uh, an interesting file type, such as a, an executable, a zip file, a RAR file, or stuff like that, we will also enqueue that final file for file scanning. So for example, this is an example of our own desktop application for VirusTotal, which eases the task of uploading files to VirusTotal. If you happen to follow the link of the, uh, the, the file scan, you can see that, whoa, McAfee is detecting actually our application you know that's a false positive and one of the things we do that commonly users do not appreciate is that certain times we fix false positives with a, a message saying hey this this is actually good so if the user is even more curious he may have noticed that in addition to doing scans of urls and uh, files we also have a documentation site where they can find how to use our API, they can also find a mobile application, they can find browser extensions to ease the task of scanning URLs and files with VirusTotal. There's a whole set of public uh, resources available to, to the end user. So that's the vision of the average end user about VirusTotal. But how does its staff see VirusTotal? So we think of VirusTotal as an internal joke, uh, as a crap fan. And why is it a crap fan? Well, first of all, because of the volumes that we are handling. 
Uh, currently, we have 354 million samples stored in our data set, and that's increasing at a rate of 560K distinct new samples per day. This means uh, performing an average of more than 1 million file scans, uh, scans per day. Why is that? Because many of the files are actually rescanned on a daily basis by users themselves. We also have more than 130 million URLs in the data set. This is slightly lower than the samples because the URL scanning project started off uh, something like five years after the file scanning project. We currently receive URLs at a rate of 700K files per day and are performing more or less 1.3 million URL scans per day. Uh, this URL scanning activity leads to generating information on domains and IP addresses, and those are the, actually the, the numbers that we are seeing today with respect to this. So, it's a crap fun, but it's not only a crap fun because of the volumes, it's also because of the amount of information that we ge generate for uh, each individual item. So let me show you with a couple of examples. Okay, this is a report for a portable executable file. Normally users will just see the antivirus scan report and will not notice that we also produce certain other tabs, okay? So under the file detail tab, you can see that we extract information relative to the Authenticode signature block for the file. We extract information from the uh, uh, header uh, of the portable executable, such as the compilation timestamp, the entry point, its sections, the inputs, the exports, if there were any, the information regarding the resources, the languages, and some other metadata that's extracted by the EXIF tool by Phil Harvey. So, as you can see, we run not only the antivirus solutions on the file, but on the files, but also a large amount of other tools. And why is this interesting? So, imagine, for example, if you are running your own collection, for sure you want to index stuff like the compilation timestamp to see if, hey. Perhaps an attacker has an uploaded a file just after creating it. So by looking at the compilation, at the difference between the upload file time and the compilation timestamp time, you can try to find attackers. Of course, they, they can fake that, but that's a, a, an interesting notion to have. And this is an example for portable executables, but we run a different set of tools on each different file type. For example, this is a, a PDF file. If you happen to go to the file detail tab, you'll see that we run another tool called PDF ID. This tool will extract the information such, such as, hey, this uh, PDF file has one page, uh, it has an invalid cross-reference section, it embeds uh, JavaScript. And this information is quite interesting uh, when you use that fe as features into a scoring system, for example, because you may be able to detect and newly created exploits for PDF that are not currently being detected by antivirus solutions. So, in addition to tools acting on the files, we also have certain post-processing tasks. One of them is actually uh, running the files in sandboxes. This is an example for a portable executable. So, thanks to the Cuckoo guys, we are running Cuckoo machines on all the portable executables submitted to VirusTotal. So you will find there all the open files, read files, deleted files, and stuff like that. And we do this not only for portable executables, but also for Android. If you happen to go to Android, we have our own in-house developed Android sandbox. And you get all sorts of information equivalent to what you would get for a portable executable. So the network traffic, the contact URLs, all of that information. Additionally, the Android example is quite interesting because we are also running AndroGuard, which is a tool that developed by a former colleague of us called Anthony Desnos, which will extract a lot of metadata from the file itself, such as the risk summary, the permissions being used, uh, whether it's making any uh, clear-cut uh, calls to certain uh, APIs which might be suspicious, etc. Another post-processing task that we run uh, happens on, on PCAT files, on network traces. 
Uh, these files are actually quite special because for them you will not only get the results of antivirus solutions, but you will also get the results of IDSs acting on the file. So for example, here you can see that 23 alerts were generated by Snort. If you happen to follow the link, you will get to the detailed information regarding the Snort alert triggered. So you can see, hey, probably this has been, uh, this pickup probably contains some sort of uh, exploit kit trace. And the same happens for Suricat. Uh, additionally, for this kind of files, we run our own tools and developed in-house, and we have like metadata from Wireshark, the HTTP requests that are seen inside the the, the pickup. So, for example, we we just uh, put in strong the the requests that lead to content types that are interesting. So, imagine this one is. Uh, what is it, the content type? It doesn't say. Uh, anyway, if you happen to follow the link, you will also get to the report of that particular file because we are running post-processing tasks that will extract files from the, the network trace and resubmit that to ViusTotal. So as you can see, we are extracting quite a huge amount of information from each one of the, of the items submitted. This information actually enables us to develop even further information and uh, feed further the crap fun, you know. So what is this further information? It's actually the relationships of the file. And what kind of relationships do we extract and generate? The first one of them are the execution parents. This means this file was executed by the following files that we have executed in our sandboxes. We also extract information like the P resource parents, which means we are uh, processing all the P's uh, submitted to ViusTotal and uh, uh, looking into the resources that they have, extracting those resources, and if they happen to be also interesting file types, we resubmit those to ViusTotal. Similarly, if someone submits a zip file to ViusTotal, we extract all its content and resubmit whatever we deem interesting. We have also reached certain uh, agreements with other companies such as Carbon Black that they run uh, software monitors and, and the user PCs and as a side effect they are seeing quite a lot of activity regarding files so we asked for that data and they kindly, kindly offered it to us so they can see stuff like hey this file was written to disk on an end user physical machine uh, by the following processes. So. Taking into account all the information that we have, shouldn't we have a, a more interesting vision regarding ViusTotal? Well, we do. And actually, uh, our vision for ViusTotal is that we are some sort of telescope that uh, allows you to have certain visibility into any kind of threat on the internet. And at the same time, we are a microscope into very specific threats. And how do we accomplish this vision? Well, we accomplish it through what we call ViusTotal Intelligence. This is a resource which is available to any of you if you happen to be doing independent research, uh, interesting research, and you want access to it, you can ask for it. And it, it's given freely for independent researchers with no commercial interest. So what's happening with ViusTotal Intelligence? This is actually the research uh, platform that, that's very similar to Google, but for malware, and at the same time, to Facebook for malware. Why? Because Facebook is about relationships, and intelligence allows you to leverage the relationships that we, that we discussed previously. So let me show you a couple of examples of searches that you can make. Imagine you are uh, an AV researcher at some lab. You might want to do a search like this one. I'm telling the interface, hey, uh, give me all those files submitted to ViusTotal where McAfee says it's clean, Symantec says it's infected, Kaspersky says it's infected, and Microsoft says it's infected. And there you have a list. You can click on any one of those files and you will get detailed information that, you have on, that we have for them. All of the de details that I mentioned previously, the behavior report, etc., etc. And you can actually download the file for further study. So now I'm gonna run a couple of more of examples of stuff that you can do with this interface and that hopefully you will find interesting. So. Other speakers have been discussing about uh, setbot or CUs. So you can also do stuff like, hey, 
tell me all those samples that have been detected Microsoft, by Microsoft as set bot. That will give you a listing of all those uh, uh, files submitted to VirusTotal where specifically Simon take, uh, Microsoft said it's a set bot. So you can see a small snippet there and you can see that it really matches. Some of the stuff that you can do here is we are indexing the content of the files themselves in suffix trees. So you can say stuff like, hey, I want all those files that have a content that have VirusTotal written in and its strings or whatever in, in, in its content. You will also get matches for that. It's a bit slow because this runs uh, over something like six months of data, and that's quite huge. You also get matches for that. You can even do stuff uh, related to, to the relationships themselves. So for example, since we uh, scan URLs, we also are able to uh, correlate that no, we're disconnected. Okay, so we are able to correlate actually the URLs with the files themselves. So I want to say, hey, let me know any files that have been downloaded from uh, Google Docs and have more than 20 positives. You will also get results for those. And interestingly enough, many of those files are still active in Google Docs. So. I'm going to uh, make it a bit shorter with the demos I had for this so I can show you uh, uh, other features of the of VirusTotal. But eventually you have a whole set of, uh, of modifiers. Most of them are located here. You have stuff like the compilation timestamp I was mentioning, positives, the languages of the resources, tags that we develop, uh, how many submissions ha has the file had to VirusTotal, et cetera, et cetera. So one, just one last example that's pretty interesting. You can also say stuff like, hey, tell me all those PDF files that have been tagged as exploits because some antivirus engine has said it's an exploit uh, and that have been seen in some email submitted to VirusTotal. So they are tagged as attachment. When you perform such a, ser a search, and you go to the file details, you can go to the in the wild information, and you will see the actual emails where the file was traveling as an attachment. That would be something like uh, the way you can track what deception techniques are being used by attackers in order to deceive the final users. So all these relationships would not make sense if we didn't have something to also cluster together files so another thing you can do in intelligence is actually search for similar files. We've developed a set of feature hashes for, for each file type, uh, important file type at VirusTotal. So we extract features and produce a, a hash that allows us to uh, cluster together files with no uh, comp uh, computing expense, nearly. So you can find files similar to the one I, I just chose, and as you can see, at least apparently it does cluster together correctly because it's even the same CVE being used. And this uh, clustering can, uh, is actually extended to an independent tab where we try to track all the families submitted to VirusTotal. Interestingly enough, if you see, for example, for yesterday, we had uh, over 300k submissions uh, that had a feature hash and Within the top 200 families, light nearly two thirds of those submissions. You know that's really interesting. So, in addition to doing this, uh, very often the similarity feature hash will not be enough, and people will want to uh, hunt down malware more specifically. Many of you may be already using something called Yara. Yara is a tool uh, developed by one of my colleagues, Victor and allows you to write uh, pretty much stuff like uh, AV signatures in plain text where you say, hey, tell me, uh, trigger an, an alert every time a file matching these strings uh, with these conditions, string A and uh, the number of string B greater than two, et cetera, is submitted to VirusTotal. So that will trigger certain notifications
and you will be uh, alerted upon each new submission or uh, performed to virus total that matches your signatures. So an interesting example was lately uh, FireEye discovered this new flash expo uh, exploit being leveraged. And when they, they released their blog post, I had no real way of tracking down whether that file was in VirusTotal already. So I took a look at their blog, and they were describing how they were doing the ROP generation, for example. They said uh, the exploit was searching for the, this particular function, CW protect memory uh, from NTDLL. And they were also searching for uh, set threat context from kernel 32. So what I did is so I went over to to the uh, uh, Jara feature, and I set up a rule which was re really pretty trivial. I was just searching for those two functions, and in addition to that, I was searching for one of these three. Why what was I searching for one of these three? Because if we, you know the Swift file format and the way attackers abuse it, they actually very commonly use these functions in order to uh, either heap spray or inject the shell code, etc. So when I, I set up that rule, I actually got quite a, a good number of triggers that were, in fact, after the antiviruses started to detect the, the exploit, were indeed the exploit being discussed by FireEye. So that's uh, pretty much the, the private side of VirusTotal that most people don't know about and you researchers can make use of it. And uh, it's equivalent uh, programmatically is also available through the private API. Many of you probably have already contacted us in the past and we gave you access. If you go to Google Scholar, you will see that many of the papers published have been done with, with tools like this one. I would just like to do a brief mention of what we are working on right now. So I'll give you an example of, of, of stuff I'm doing. Uh, we didn't have a good enough feature hash to cluster together Swift files when this uh, exploit appeared. So right now I was doing a feature hash for Swift files and actually developing some tools to further characterize those and, and extract features that would indicate that some sort of exploitation attempt is being made. I'm also working on extending the Jara hunting interface so that we can not only uh, write Jara rules and apply it in the future, like for future submissions, but we are also going to be able to write Jara rules and apply that backwards in time to the full collection of virus total. And one last example, if this works and I can connect to that machine. So this new feature is called RetroHunt. And pretty much right now it's just command line. I'm gonna. I pulled from the Jara Exchange Group uh, signature, which is here you see it. It's a signature from some rat being used in APT attacks, and this is the extreme rat. I'm gonna run that against approximately one month worth of data submitted to virus total. Of course, you might think I'm just printing out the hashes, you know. <laughs> but believe me, it's not happening. <laughs> and soon it will be available in, in, in intelligence for all of you. So I wanted to show you how, how quick it is. It might not seem so, so quick, but you have to take into account that we are applying uh, binary patterns to files, and it's a pretty huge collection. So it's not like doing searches that are already indexed in a database. You're actually doing the work. So it took 28 uh, seconds to actually apply Jara to a collection of one month of, uh, worth of data uh, in virus total. So that's, for me, it's quite impressive to, to be able to do that. And that's pretty much. If, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to address them. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Do you guys have anything planned for, um, for more extended language, like would it, would it be possible in the future to, to do some kind of calculations and uh, maybe have some <coughs> anonymous variables and stuff like that? I think that's something that people are looking for desperately for quite some time already. Yeah, so the question was 
whether we have any plans for Jira to include additional functionality that would allow you to perform more advanced tasks such as, as define uh, new variables, etc. So actually, the lead for the Jira project, and it's it's his project, is something uh, which Google allows us to uh, allows him to maintain, but it's actually belongs to him himself. Is is Victor? Uh, I work closely with Victor, and he has indeed. Uh, uh, he's implementing the concept of Jira extensions that will allow you to write your own C code to act on, on files, and that's integrated within Jira and will allow you to leverage what, what you are thinking of. Yeah. Is there any relationship or plans for a relationship between VirusTotal's uh, URL functionality and something like Google Safe Browsing? So, no, there is not. Actually, Google Safe Browsing is integrated in VirusTotal. So one of the URL scanners acting on, on, on the URL submitted to VirusTotal is Google Safe Browsing. Another one is Yandex Safe Browsing, for example. But the other way around, uh, uh, Google Safe Browsing integrated in VirusTotal, uh, that uh, wouldn't make sense because it wouldn't be fair for the the rest of the engine. So the thing is, uh, Google can use our data in the same way that Yandex can use our data because of participating in the project. You know, so Yandex, because of participating in the project, they have access to our full feed, and similarly, Google Search Browsing would also have access to it. But I know that they, right now, they are not using it at least. So, there was okay, when someone, someone submits a sample and to detect uh, some well-known pa uh, packer, uh, UPX, for example, to name the simplest one. Uh, are you trying to first unpack this sample and then run uh, analysis or? Yeah, actually I didn't mention that. So we do have uh, post-processing tasks, as I mentioned. One of them is actually un unpacking the, all of the samples arriving to VirusTotal. So we run a, a generic unpacker, and when we apply Jara rules, we apply them on the unpacked version and the original version, you know. So you can write uh, uh, plain text uh, strings in, in, in your rules because they, they will match against the unpacked version. One more question. Yeah, just a quick one. Uh, how far in the past would you allow to, to go with the, with the new feature? With the Jara feature? The, the perspective search. It's like one month, three months, uh, a so, year. Okay, so uh, intel uh, intelligence and its modifiers, right now, it's going to go back six months in, in time. And uh, we will be extending that probably as time goes by. So it will become a matter of years as, as time advances. This particular feature, RetroHunt, I'm actually constrained by the, the RAM of this machine. So I, my estimation is that at most it will be holding two months of data, at most. It would be, ideally, I, I know what you mean, it would be amazing to be able to run back to 2006 and see where, whether any Chinese attacker happened to submit by that time some, some malware sample that allows us to track him. <laughs> so no more questions, we are out of time. Thank you very much.